What is up, YouTube? It's been quite some time since I've been here. My name is Carla from Teaching Trends. Welcome back for those of you who have joined me back at my channel again. And for all of those who are new, welcome. As you can see from my channel here, I do a lot of different things from remote jobs, careers, things that are trending, what is hot in remote jobs. And I also talk about what is going here on YouTube. So if you go to my playlist here that you see at my screen, you will see that I have some new content creator videos, and I also have my healthcare student videos there. So if you like to watch any of those, please feel free to do so. Teaching, skills, polls, all sorts of things about healthcare-related jobs, things that are not healthcare-related that are also jobs you may be interested in remote, take a look at my channel. With that being said, today we're going to talk about something that a lot of people have asked me to talk about on my channel, which is getting into cardiovascular care. So we're going to do just a basic explanation of what an EKG is from the Henry Ford Health. An EKG is a simple and painless test that records the electrical activity in the heart. The doctor will use an EKG to detect any heart problems such as a heart attack, irregular heartbeats, or heart failure. With each heartbeat, an electrical signal travels from the top of the heart to the bottom of the heart, causing the heart to contract and pump blood. This signal creates the rhythm of the heartbeat. Okay, I'm going to have you have a seat right up here. All right. And today we're going to be doing an electrocardiogram, also known as an EKG. Have you had one of those tests before? No. No? Okay. So this test is going to measure the electrical activity in your heart. We'll show how fast your heart is beating, if you have a regular or an irregular pulse, and it'll show us the electrical activity in each part of your heart. Now, this is very important. As she mentioned, the electrical activity in each part of the patient's heart. We will get into talking about how this um, comes to be and the different parts of the electrical activity of the heart. But for right now, we're just going to show that EKG or that ECG placement. As you can see, she's getting ready to, she's already explained the procedure to the patient, and now she's going to be placing what are called electrodes onto the patient's chest. Now, as you see there, she's doing the placement of the electrodes in a particular area there on the patient's chest. And as we see there, there are other leads that are going on to the chest. The lead wires then are hooked up to the electrodes for the ECG or EKG. And once everything is on the patient, we want them to relax, breathe normally, try not to move or talk. And then the button is hit on the ECG machine. Once that happens, you're looking for a nice, clean, straight image that prints out in your 12-lead ECG or EKG. Then she's just going to remove the wires there and the electrodes. So when we place the electrodes on the patient for ECG, they actually go in a particular place. If we're looking at the chest leads, we have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. These are known as the chest leads. They're also known as precordial leads. And as you see here at the bottom of our screen here, V1 and V2 are at the fourth intercostal space. Keep in mind that only one of the chest leads is on the right side, and that is V1. So remember, four spaces down the intercostal space are V1 and V2. The rest are at about the fifth intercostal space. So you're going to place V1 in the right intercostal space at the fourth rib on the right side of the sternum. V1, the right side of the sternum at the fourth intercostal space. V2, 
the left side of the sternum at the fourth intercostal space. V3 is going to be midway between V2 and V4. So we skip that one and then we place V4, which is at the fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. We want to know what that line kind of looks like. We see right here that we have that midclavicular space. So that when they say midclavicular, they mean mid collarbone, fifth intercostal space down. Anterior means in front of. So the fifth one goes anterior at the fifth intercostal space. Interior meaning in front of the axillary line. The axillary line is the armpit. So it goes in front of that axillary area in the fifth space. V6 goes in mid axillary line in that fifth space, which are kind of be midway underneath that armpit area. So when they talk about mid clavicular, mid collarbone and clavicle, anterior axillary just before the armpit and mid axillary is gonna be directly at that midline where that armpit would be at the fifth intercostal space. So let's take a look at those one more time. V1, fourth intercostal space at the right sternal border. V2 is at the fourth intercostal space, left sternal border. Remember, V1 is the only one on the right side. V3 is gonna be between V2 and V4. So we skip V3 and we put on V4, which is at the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. Remember, the midclavicular line is that line that we see right here on our screen, mid collar bone. After we put on that one at the midclavicular line, V4, then we place V3 between V2 and V4. Remember, you're going to put V1 and 2 on, then you're going to put V4, and then go back and put V3 in between those two. Last but not least, we have V5 and V6. V5 is at the anterior axillary line, meaning in front of the armpit line. And mid-axillary is going to be fifth intercostal space, mid-axillary, the middle. So let's take a look here at this placement for the chest leads. There are six chest leads, V1 through V6. And then we have our limbs, right arm, left arm, right leg, and left leg for a total of 10 lead wires. We are going to put those electrodes in these spaces that we talked about. Those are going to be the electrodes or the stickers that stick to the patient's chest that we attach to the wires. Keep in mind, we only have 10 wires. The reason why we call it 12 lead EKG, I'll explain in a little bit, but for now, make sure you know this lead placement, where they go, and take note of the colors that you see on the screen for the lead wire colors. Red is V1, yellow V2, green is V3, blue is V4, orange is V5, and V6 is purple. Our limb leads, right arm is white, left arm is black, right leg is green, left leg is red. Make sure you know the EKG lead placement. This is the really important part for our EKG technicians. They will make sure they have proper placement of these 10 wires so that we can have a really clean image on our ECG. The next thing we're going to talk about is why the EKG is called 12 lead if we just discussed that there were only 10 wires. Well, 12 lead EKG is called 12 lead because it gives us 12 views or 12 images of the heart. If we're looking at this ECG or EKG, we see to the very left hand side of the screen Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. We then see Roman, we see letters AVR, AVL, and AVF. And then we see V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. 
If we count these leads, one, two, and three, ABR, AVL, AVF, V1, two, three, four, five, and six, we have 12 lead EKG. So remember, 10 wires, six on the chest, one on each limb gives us 10 wires, but those wires give us 12 views of the actual heart. So when we're looking at this EKG image, we're looking at the 12 views electrically that an electrocardiogram gives us. The leads V1 through V6 are chest leads. They are called precordial leads, pre meaning bef be before, cordial mean the chest. So before the chest. The electrical activity right from the chest leads go directly to the EKG paper. And we see right here on our EKG or ECG that we have our V1 through V6. So we really don't have to discuss those because the electrical activity that goes right from those V leads, the ones that we looked at earlier on the chest, V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, they go directly to our EKG paper that we see here on the right-hand side of our EKG or our ECG. The ones we have to talk about are leads 1, 2, and 3, and AVR, AVL, AVF. The best way I can describe this is showing you something called Einthoven's Triangle. Einthoven's Triangle shows us how the electrical activity bounces around the heart to create the leads on our paper of ECG. We talked about the lead placement on the limbs, the right arm, the left arm, the right leg, and left leg. But that energy bounces around to create some of the images on our ECG. So if we're looking at this, remember I mentioned Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. Roman numeral 1 is created on our ECG paper by the electrical energy bouncing between the right arm and the left arm. If you look at the top of the image, you will see lead one, Roman numeral one. That image is created on our EKG or our ECG paper by the electrical activity bouncing from the right arm to the left arm. So if we go back to our EKG and we look at lead number one, that energy is created by the left arm and the right arm activity bouncing off each other, which gives us Roman numeral one on the far left side of this EKG. Lead number two that we see there, Roman numeral two to the far left, that is created by the electrical activity bouncing from the right arm to the left leg. Lead three is created by the electrical energy bouncing from the left leg to the left arm. So if we are looking at our paper for our ECG, we'll be able to determine what is going on and what leads are placed on the patient properly if one lead happens not to appear on our ECG paper. So when looking at our ECG here, if we're looking at our Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3, these are created by the limb leads. So if lead 1 did not appear on our EKG or ECG, when we printed it out, we would check our right arm and left arm. And we know that because it says so right here. If our right arm or left arm were to fall off, on off of our patient when we are doing lead placement, lead one will not appear on your paper. If your right arm or left leg is off on an EKG, your lead two will not appear. And if your left leg or left arm is off, your lead three will not appear. So for looking at this EKG, one, two, and three are created by the limb leads bouncing off of each other, that electrical activity. And I'm going to place it here on the screen for just a quick review of what we just learned. So now you know where the leads, Roman numeral one, two, and three, right arm to left arm is lead one, right arm to left leg is lead two, and left arm to left leg is lead three. Next, we're gonna talk about the augmented leads. The augmented leads are really easy. It is the leftover energy to each limb. So leftover energy to the right arm is AVR. 
leftover energy to the left arm is AVL, and leftover energy to the left leg or left foot is AVF. So if we're looking at our EKG paper, we will be able to see that. We're looking at our ECG paper, AVR, AVL, AVF are the leftover energy to each limb. So if the right arm is not put on properly, we will also not get lead AVR. If our left arm is not put on properly, we will not get lead AVL picture on our ECG or EKG. And if AVF is off or our left leg is off, we will not get lead AVF. So I'm going to scroll down to that section so you're gonna have a quick glimpse of what we just went over. Keep in mind, Einthoven's triangle will explain those leads. Einthoven's triangle explains leads, Roman numeral one, two, and three, and AVR, AVL, AVF. Keep in mind, as we discussed before, the V leads or the chest leads go directly to the ECG paper. So if we're looking at these leads here, you'll see those chest leads that we talked about earlier. These leads here go directly to the ECG paper. There's only six of them, so we have to explain the other six, and the other six give us our 12 lead EKG. If there's anything else you'd like me to talk about, my next video is going to be about blood flow and blood flow in the heart. If you need more explanation about Einthoven's triangle and how we get these 12 views on our ECG or EKG paper, feel free to like down in the comments, write a question there up to what you want me to answer as far as EKG lead placement and how we get these views on the actual ECG paper. My name is Carla from Teaching Trends. Please like, subscribe, and ask all the questions you need. I'll be coming up with more blood flow videos and rhythm interpretation videos. Let me know what you'd like to review next or go over next. Thanks. Until next time, everybody, take care.